The scenery is gorgeous. Can you feel the width? 4096 pixels, 17 by 9 aspect, true cinema 4K, and of course at 24 frames. And can you feel the data rate? 150 megabits or the bit depth? 10 bits with 422 color? The Panasonic GH5 arrived just in time to take on our Viking Rhine getaway, and I'm enjoying every glorious moment. This video is produced in 4K, and I encourage you to watch these beautiful images on the best quality, highest resolution viewing device you have. The GH5 renders these scenes with a color purity and a clarity that rivals pro broadcast cameras. First impressions. This is a serious camera. Its construction and the included parts speak clearly to its pro aspirations, clearly built to be used under demanding conditions. And this small part, the cable holder for HDMI, tells you this camera is serious about video. Such a small thing, so much appreciated. And wait, that HDMI connector? It's full size. So much more useful than the mini and micro connectors on the competition. And of course, mic in, headphone out. There is one feature that other interchangeable lens cameras have that's missing from the GH5, and that's a time limit for video. The competition limits its recordings to 30 minutes, the GH5 does not, and that too says this camera is serious about video. Overall, the GH5 amazes. It's the latest iteration of this flagship still camera overpowered by video goodness and the darling of indie filmmakers. Panasonic does not so much push the envelope as completely break out of it. There are not enough superlatives. At the initial press briefing, I had to check with my colleagues to confirm what I just heard. This eight-day cruise, although packed with sights and adventures, is likely not long enough to take advantage of all of the features of the GH5. Panasonic loaned me the G-Series 12-35 f2.8 with power optical stabilization and the 25mm f1.4 lens. Also had the Olympus 12-100 f4 along on this trip. The GH5 uses a 20 megapixel micro four-thirds size sensor. The weather-sealed magnesium alloy body can shoot in minus 10 degrees Celsius temperatures. It weighs 725 grams. As I've lately reviewed several cameras with left-handed power switches, worth noting that the GH5 is on the right where it's easy to turn on if I'm holding the camera with my right hand while I'm swinging it up to my eye. The LCD tilts and swivels the ideal configuration for all situations. In manual exposure video mode, the backward-facing rear dial controls shutter speed, the upward-facing front dial aperture. This shot, incidentally, is of the LCD screen on the back. I wanted to show you this display first because it's different from the screen you're going to see in the rest of this review, which is recorded from the HDMI out. On the LCD, the quick menu overlays the whole screen. The menu also covers the whole screen. In contrast, the HDMI out, which you see with an external monitor or recorder, is higher resolution, so all the screen display items are less obtrusive. The Q menu and the main menu overlay the top left corner of the screen. But back to exposure adjustments. The menu can flip the dial selection and reverse the direction of operation as well. Adjust ISO using the middle button of the row behind the front dial. It has two bumps, worth noting that the physical profile of all three is slightly different to help distinguish by feel when shooting with the viewfinder. Once activated, use the top dial to adjust the ISO. The ISO can be adjusted with full or one-third stop increments. ISO ranges from 200 to 25.6. Turn extended on for 100, 125, and 160. Auto ISO is not adjusted from the custom menu exposure settings, but from the stills menu, where an upper and lower limit can be selected, but not a triggering shutter speed. Although there are no similar settings in video mode, auto ISO is available in video, which does, as I turn the light up full, make a more natural and gradual adjustment than turning the ISO dial, even when it's set for one-third stops. While we're here, the custom menu has three nesting levels, making it simpler to get to the feature you want on the six pages of custom adjustments. The four pages of the settings menu are not yet organized. Format is at the bottom of page four. I back up my recordings and format cards every day, so this is the kind of thing that I'd immediately add to the My menu. 
which has 30 pages of selections. Again, a nesting level would be appreciated here, although note the top right, which identifies the section you're in. Format is on page 24. By default, the menu returns to its last setting, and here's an option to always start with My Menu. By the way, I'm using the control keypad on the back to make these adjustments, but this is a touch screen. All of this can also be done by touch. Back to video exposure, it's worth noting that although Aperture and ISO are stepped controls, while recording the adjustment is slightly moderated, so there is a slight delay if you make a quick change. Press Fun 2 and use the Q menu to select the meter mode. The meter at the bottom of the screen shows exposure is under, zero, or over. It's also displayed while the ISO is being adjusted. I'm mentioning some of these things that touch is available when the external monitor is connected or meter is displayed while the ISO is set as some competing models don't do this. Press DISP to view the histogram which can be positioned using touch even when an external display is connected. I find that extraordinarily handy to get it out of the way. It can't be sized. Note that it displays white when it's happy with the exposure, yellow when it's not. Good video cameras have Zebra. Here there are two set on the custom monitor display settings. I set one to 70% for white skin, the other to 105 for overexposure. Then assign it to Fun 1. Zebra's on page 10 of 16, just to give you a sense of how customizable the GH5 is. Zebra appears on the HDMI out. And note that you can customize seven physical buttons and four more virtual ones on screen, then another nine on the second screen. Finally, set constant preview on for a true representation of manual aperture and shutter. Then press the Fun 1 button to cycle through the zebras to verify exposure. A shortcut to setting a Fun button is to hold it down until the menu appears. Now let's get our colors right. The white balance button is beside ISO. Use the rear dial to select. Panasonic, like others, has added a second auto white balance setting so that low light interiors don't tend so heavily to orange red. There are four custom white balance slots. Press up to capture and yes, this works in video mode. Press down to make further adjustments. There are also four slots to save Kelvin settings, displayed numerically along with a scale to help understand the range. Further color fine tuning is available from the Q menu. Use left right to select the option, turn the rear dial to choose the setting. I appreciate the ease of access here, but I prefer the main menu. Again, a good addition to the personal menu. More of the images visible on the LCD and individual parameters, contrast, sharpness, noise reduction, saturation, and hue can be adjusted. Seven presets, including a standard monochrome and a slightly more contrasty version. If you do make adjustments, press DISP to save to one of the four custom slots. There are three video-specific color profiles, Cine Like D, a neutral settings for color grading in post, Cine Like V, more contrasty, and a Rec. 709 equivalent. Rec. 709 is the international standard for HD displays. A newer standard, Rec. 2020, is the international standard for 4K displays, maybe in the GH6. Using 709, the knee point and slope can be manually set. Reducing the point and increasing the slope can reduce overexposed highlights. It's easy to see this on a chart, properly exposed at 4.5. When I overexpose to 3.5, the top three white chips are overexposed. With a manual knee point of 80% and a rather steep 90 degree slope, all three are again visible. The advantage here being that we've provided a little more illumination, two-thirds of a stop, for areas otherwise lost in shadow. Panasonic also provides highlight and shadow controls, which are available for all settings except Rec. 709, to make further adjustments to the response curve. While these don't change the dynamic range, they do provide the ability to change the contrast. A flatter curve is less contrasty, a steeper curve is more. In addition to the four presets, three custom curves can be created and saved. I skipped over filter effects. In video there are 17 presets from the 22 available for stills with a variety of effects. By the way, miniature plays at 10 times speed and is silent. Oh, the dimmed out simultaneous record without filter? That's available only for stills. Now with exposure and color set, let's focus. 
We'll start with the switch on the back with three positions, single, continuous, and manual. For video, I would use continuous or manual. Face detect, selected from the fun three buttons focus menu, combined with autofocus continuous, is very useful, particularly with its eye detect crosshairs. Although it is a little heavy and a little pricey, the GH5 does make a great vlogging camera. Now I'm using the Panasonic 12 to 35 millimeter lens with the power stabilization on. I'm using AFC, face detection, and auto ISO. I've connected my RODELINK wireless filmmaker kit to the audio in, and I flip the screen out so that I can see what I'm doing. Now, this is pretty much the same configuration that I was using when I was shooting interviews and our on-camera scenes during our Viking Rhine getaway. Panasonic provides more focus capabilities than most. In addition to face detect, select a tracking mode, touch the subject to be tracked, the selection point can't be moved with the joystick. There's a full screen setting with 225 points and the particularly interesting custom multi configured by pressing up. There are three default patterns and three custom patterns can be created and saved. Incidentally, a double press on the Fun 3 button selects the next mode to the right, which gets us to one area. Press down and use the rear dial to select one of the eight sizes. Move the point using touch or the joystick. The dimmed out pinpoint is not available with continuous focus. In single focus, the pinpoint area can be set within the light rectangle. Then use the dials as indicated bottom left to set the magnification. Set the point using the joystick or touch. Use the back button to focus. For autofocus continuous, there are two video adjustments for speed and sensitivity. In manual focus, expanded view appears by default as soon as you turn the focus ring on the lens. Again, the dials control magnification. Move the viewport using touch. When an external monitor is connected, only full screen expanded view is available. Using the LCD, touch the picture in picture icon to switch to full screen expanded view and peaking. Not found with focus options, but display options. Level and color can be selected. There's also a mono viewfinder mode. That's available as a custom monitor display option. Unlike peaking and expanded view, it appears only on the LCD, not on an external monitor. Traditionally, even color TV studio cameras had black and white monitors, which make it easier to focus. In manual focus, one point, moving the focus point, racks the focus. The same happens in single focus mode and, of course, continuous. And note that sometimes focus wouldn't lock on the tulip and needed a hand by pressing the back focus button. It would be nice if manual and or single allowed me to move the point and then press back focus to rack. But Panasonic has a setting for that. On page two of the settings menu, not sure why this isn't with the other focus options, three positions can be set. Select the point, press AF to focus, exit and set. Let's set one on AN, the second on the tulip, then set the speed, five settings. The rec setting selects the point to focus when record is pressed. The wait time determines how long between focus points. Select start and the three points appear as on-screen buttons, touch and the focus racks. Super fast is fast. Medium takes about two seconds and slow takes about 16 seconds. A setting between two and 16 would be useful or just a variable control. The LCD panel can be used as a touchpad when you're shooting with the viewfinder. Use the custom menu, operation, touch settings to turn touchpad AF on using either exact or offset. Offset works better for me when you touch your finger starts at the current position rather than jumping to a new point. I find it aggravating that the lens resets the focus when the camera is powered off and on. Set lens position resume to on to retain the focus. I don't think I'd actually ever use this, but for the sake of completeness, here's 4K live cropping, which creates a programmed pan or zoom. You'll want a tripod. Set the duration of the move, 20 or 40 seconds. Using touch and the rear dial, size and position the start, then the end frame, then press record. The move executes. Aren't you glad I chose 20 seconds? Oh, and regardless of setting,
The recording is HD 1080 and recording stops automatically. Please send me a link if you use this feature in a movie. Thanks. Use disk to reset. Remember to turn off when you're done. I know you've been dying to ask if the GH5 can capture stills while recording video. Yes, and here's how that works. First, it's only available in standard photo modes, not with the mode dial on video. From the menu, select either Video or Photo Priority. In Video Priority, press the shutter to capture a JPEG still at the current video resolution and aspect. A camera icon replaces the elapsed time display while the image is being saved. The video recording is uninterrupted. In Photo Priority, press the shutter to capture at the current quality setting. While recording, there's a short blackout, and the video recording is interrupted with the silent still image while the photo is saved. Well, not that much of an interruption, but remember that the shutter speed you want for video and for a still will be quite different. The big red button starts video recording in any mode. There is a crop and aspect adjustment when the GH5 is switched to video mode. Remaining time on the card, according to the current settings, appears bottom right, elapsed time on the left, along with the indication of which cards are recording. A 64 gigabyte card will hold about 55 minutes of 150 megabit video, the GH5 current highest data rate. That rate requires a speed class 3 type card. With two UHS-2 SD card slots in a handy side-mounted door, the GH5 supports relay recording, backup recording, and allocation recording. This means you can simultaneously record video to both cards. The GH5 supports three system frequencies. 60 Hz drop for NTSC, 50 Hz for PAL, 24 for cinematic recording. Use 50 or 60 if you're creating for a TV display, 24 for movie projection. All work for display on computers and sharing on YouTube. This is a true reset. You'll have to power the camera on and off. The setting does impact the available video quality settings, although 24 frame is available at system frequency 60, 60 and 30 are not available at 24. For this review, I've left the system at 60. Rec area, dimmed out here as movie mode is selected on the mode dial, changes the display to movie crop in the other modes. Video priority display sets the display options accessed by pressing disp to the video appropriate ones. The GH5 records video in four formats, MOV, which I'd recommend as it supports the highest settings, but AVC HD, MP4 with standard, and LPCM audio are also available. In MOV resolution, or record quality, ranges from 1080, or full HD, and 2160, both at 16x9 UHD, 3840 width, and the Cinema 17x9, 4096 width, Again, illustrating that the GH5 is serious about video. Frame rates from 24, the maximum for cinema 4K, up to 60 drop frame for UHD. You may have noticed that some of the video quality settings support variable frame rate, which, depending on the quality setting, can be set from 15 times fast to half speed at 4K, 17% at 30 frame HD. Variable frame rate recordings are silent. The bit depth includes 10-bit settings, C4K and UHD30. In June 2017, that's more than the competition offers, but before getting too enthusiastic, it's worth noting that the highest data rate is 150 megabits, although an upgrade to 400 megabits is promised for summer 2017. Until that happens, both the 60-frame 4K mode and the 10-bit recording capability are compromised by compression, and in my opinion, it's not really fair to judge these settings until that happens. I'll do my best to provide an updated review when the increased data rate is available. Now, Panasonic was not able to provide a V-Log key to me. Hopefully that too will be included when I review the update. 10-bit recordings are also lacking in compatibility. Although they open and edit fine in Final Cut, neither QuickTime or OSX can open and play these files on a Mac. I hear that Windows apps can be even more problematic. Internal recordings aren't all the GH5 offers, and this is where that HDMI cable holder comes in quite handy. But it does limit the range of movement of the tilt and swivel LCD screen. Output settings are managed on the video menu. 
Resolution and frame rate are set using the rec quality, but also by the page 4 HDMI rec output. This can be set to off to output the settings selected by rec quality. Using my Shogun, I was only able to test output settings up to UHD 30 frames. Back after the break. I attempted to see the difference between 8-bit 420 and 10-bit 422 with Shogun recordings at the ProRes HQ setting, which have data rates of 690 and 720 megabits respectively. This may make a difference noticeable only if you're doing extensive color grading. Time code, free or record, drop or non, manual or time of day are available and can be output via HDMI. For an external monitor as opposed to recorder, the info display can be turned on. That's what I use to record the menus. I'd love to be able to do the manual focus punch-in using the LCD while recording externally, but that doesn't work. There are on-screen meter displays and audio levels set in decibels, a nice pro touch. Now is this the right time to suggest four channel recording, two for the internal mic and two more for an external input? I, I'd actually be happy with two mono channels. Panasonic also lent me the DMW XLR1 audio adapter. It mounts on the flash shoe, provides two XLR inputs, and a control panel to manage them. It has a cold shoe, useful to mount my Roadlink receiver, and powers from the GH5's battery. The adapter disables some internal audio features, but adds higher audio resolutions, up to 96 kHz, 24-bit for MOV video recordings. Inputs are fully independent and can be configured as mic with and without 48 volt power or line, perfect for an external mixer, with a 20 dB up, 0 and 20 dB down gain setting, and a two setting low cut filter to remove low frequency rumble. To adjust levels, use the bottom left on screen meter. It's half the price of the competitor's adapter, but still at this price compared to third-party devices, it would be nice if it had its own meter and if it could record audio internally. The GH5 has 5-axis stabilization, which, likely because of the smaller Micro Four Thirds sensor, provides better than average handheld performance. And this 12 to 35 mm lens has power optical image stabilization. There's a switch. So how best to manage? For movies, you can actually use them all. The lens switch turns stabilization on and off and adds a further crop. Movie menu page 3 is dimmed out for video as it's overridden by the lens switch and the e-stabilization mode. In stills mode, hand selects three axes side to side, up and down in rotation. The hand with the up-down arrow doesn't correct for sideways movement, useful if you're panning. For all five axes, that is to include pitch and yaw as well, Use the e-stabilization mode, which further crops the image. Turning this on and off only affects those two additional stabilization modes. There are more pro video features, like color bars, available in three flavors with tone. They activate when selected. Press center to turn it off. There are also waveform and vector scope displays, and unusually, they appear only on the LCD, not on an external display. The manual provides no explanation, so allow me. A waveform display shows luminance levels. The image is displayed left to right along the horizontal axis, brightness 0 to 100 from bottom to top vertically. The DSC Labs chart with the X pattern created by the black and white and white to black strips helps understand how it works. Anything above 100 is not broadcast legal. A vector scope shows the color vectors. There are six boxes radiating around the display. Those indicate the position of the fully saturated red, blue, green, cyan, yellow, magenta color points on color bars. Anything beyond the six boxes is not broadcast legal. If you have an anamorphic lens, the GH5 also supports anamorphic recording. There's also a loop or continuous recording mode. This is a continuous mode where the oldest recording on the card is replaced by a newer one when the card is full. With a fully charged battery and two 64 gigabyte memory cards in a 22 degrees Celsius room, I wanted to test battery life, recording duration, and overheating. I recorded at the highest quality data rate setting, Cinema 4K, 24 frame, 150 megabit. The GH5 indicated that a card would hold about 55 minutes of video. First, 
Such a pleasure to watch 30 minutes come and go without interruption. The GH5 saves video as single files, not 4 gigabyte chunks. So when card 1 filled up and the camera switched to record on card 2, card 1 had one 62 gigabyte .mov file. After one hour and 50 minutes, the second card filled up and the camera stopped recording. The battery still showed about 25%. Of course, this is not a beach on Curaçao, but I'm pretty confident that overheating will not be a problem under normal conditions. Neither the camera or the card were very warm after recording for nearly two hours. And if you're wondering if you can take out a full card and replace it while recording, yes you can. Rolling shutter jello effect seems less than average, but is visible in cinema and standard 4K modes as well as HD 1080. These were recorded with stabilization off. Maybe it's not fair to do a low light sample with a 25mm f1.4 lens. And we are at f1.4 for this shot, shutter 1 30th, ISO 3200, by the light of a single candle. This is a custom white balance, and as always, I'm a fan of Panasonic's low-light white balance. The cruise is nearly over, and there's still lots of features and capabilities to try, and before I forget, this is also a stills camera with some really great features, including an update to the 4K photo mode, an enhanced burst mode that runs at 30 frames per second, now increased to 6K. Although that sounds like a 50% increase, 4K provided 8 megapixel images, 6K does 18 megapixels over 200% more detail, as well as post focus and focus stacking. Start with burst selected on the mode dial. There are three burst speeds. This is H. I'm recording manual exposure and focus and saving high quality JPEGs, about 3.5 megs each, to a UHS 2 card. The display refresh slows, and the mechanical shutter I registered 7 frames per second, a rate it sustained for over a minute, 426 images in 60 seconds. Note that the buffer, lower right, always has its full capacity. I tried the electronic shutter, which is not exactly silent, and clocked about 5 per second, but again sustained for over a minute. Burst is good only because it saves 20 megapixel images. Turn the mode dial one further to 6K photo. Choose one of three modes, start and stop with the shutter press, record only with the shutter press, or pre-burst to save the images from one second before and after the press. Then select the resolution and speed, 6K or 18 megapixel, 30 frames per second, 4K or 8 megapixel at 60 frames. The GH5 actually records the sequence as a video file. In playback, these images have a 6K badge. Touch it to unpack the file and then scroll through to select an image, touch again to save it. Or use the playback menu's bulk save to save them all. Takes a while. For post focus, turn the drive dial to post focus. Press the shutter. The GH5 analyzes the focus points and records the image. Then press on the area of the photo you want in focus. The icon bottom right saves the photo. Save as many as you want and or press fun one select a merge mode don't worry if you get it wrong you can always try the other mode later it takes about 30 seconds but now you have an image where everything is in focus brilliant three more drive modes self timer stop motion time lapse there's not much that's missing but panorama is Although Panasonic was able to lend me the battery grip, which holds one additional battery, a total of two, a shortage of batteries meant <laughs> they could lend only one battery. The grip replicates the controls for portrait orientation shooting. The camera works with the battery either in the grip or the body. That's about all I can say. Panasonic includes a battery charger. The battery's fairly large, and if my video test is anything to go by, long-lasting. The GH5 can neither be charged nor powered from the USB-C connector. In playback, the GH5 supports RAW Convert with a good set of image manipulation and adjustment features to save a JPEG version, it can also crop and resize. JPEG images can be transferred to a smart device for posting to social media, download the free Panasonic app for iOS and Android. Movies smaller than 4K can also be transferred. Using Bluetooth, images can be transferred automatically when they're taken. Bluetooth can also turn the camera on and off remotely, although I could only get off working. 
The app supports remote photo and video and can synchronize clocks and GPS data. And here's a feature that I haven't seen elsewhere, remote jumping. Set it up and when the smartphone detects a peak of the jump, an image is taken. Didn't try that. I like the look of Panasonic's menus. The font and design are clear and clean. The addition of new features and the expansion of the control set are starting to overwhelm the navigation model. Finding a feature, or even trying to understand that a feature exists, has become much too complex and time-consuming. I like the categorization on the custom menu, but it's incomplete. Why is mic level display on the video menu instead of with the other display items on the custom menu? Panasonic does offer help, press the disk button, but for the items that are dimmed out and unselectable, it would be useful to have help to understand why it's not available. I'd love the GH5 if its only feature was the lack of a recording limitation or the HDMI cable clamp. It's a big step forward for video production using mirrorless cameras. As a result, the GH4, with its formerly impressive feature set, remains in Panasonic's lineup. The GH5 provides a lot to like now, and there may be even more when the firmware update is released later in 2017. Hopefully, I'll be back shortly with the update. Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing. Comments are always welcome. They are moderated. I do reply to all relevant and civil comments.